great job because I get to spend time just observing and um, yes I do have to do some shooting that's part of the job but it's not the be all and end all of it it's a way of life it's, you immerse yourself in the countryside um, something I never want to be without At heart, I'm a conservationist. It's all about preserving the deer. We want the best bloodlines possible, but we want a sustainable population of deer. But we don't want the old and infirm left in the herds. We'll take those out first if we can, and uh, leave a good, healthy breeding population. I want my kids to be able to enjoy deer in the way that I have. Uh, I want them to be able to see good numbers of deer and different species. We're not here to wipe them out, we're here just to control and maintain the population in good numbers, a nice healthy balance, uh, so that everyone can enjoy the herds of deer. It's not all about shooting, it's, uh, it's about spending time in the countryside. It's about the stork. I enjoy every stork, whether it's successful or not. Deer stalking in the New Forest is very different from stalking in other areas. It's, it's a reasonably flat landscape, but very varied. It varies from moorland to uh, deciduous woodland. There's lots of conifer plantations, small fields um, with coppices. It's a very interesting landscape to stalk because you can go from, well, in one stalk you could go through five or six different uh, styles of terrain. Uh, you need to be prepared for that and the stalking changes with every step really. You're sometimes glassing through woods, other times glassing across open heathland. And Got a client out tomorrow that looking for a cull animal. So today we're just having a bit of a recce, seeing what's around, seeing if we can identify anything particular that I want to take out. He shot a couple of roe, I'd like him to shoot a fallow just to get a little bit more experience. It's a bigger animal to deal with when it comes to grolicking. Um, slightly different habits as well as herd animals, so you may have to wait for a shot in that sort of herd scenario. I've been in check zero on the rifle this morning, that all seemed okay. I always like to check just in case it's been knocked, bumped, especially if I'm lending it to somebody to use as a client rifle. Wouldn't like to think that they'd missed a deer because I hadn't done my part. Throughout the year I take people out stalking as guests. Um, some are paying, some are friends just accompanying me. Uh, the paying guests are either looking to take a cull animal such as a client tomorrow, some are looking for a trophy to go on the wall. Um, trophies particularly are very, very um, specifically identified as an animal which either no longer fits in the herd or is beyond breeding age and can be taken out. It's quite a contentious thing, trophy stalking, but um, it's a part, big part of the business. And it's money that is generated from trophy stalking that actually pays the rent to the landowners so that we can manage the deer properly. If it was just all about pound signs then um, probably wouldn't, wouldn't want to be in this game. It's, it's more about managing the deer properly and we're using those trophies as part of that management plan so that they're paying back in 
once the animal is beyond its useful age. We're drawing to a close of our winter season now. Uh, looking forward to the roebucks next month. We should be shooting a few through April and into early May and then uh, give them a bit of a break until they rut at the end of July and the first week of August. Then uh, come October we shall start on the fallow bucks again. Uh, we've got the red rut at the end of September and then the seeker rut which is a bit more extended. We can, uh, we can get some seeker stags shot through October, November usually. And then we're back to our doe culling again for the winter. Even though they've got the same batch number. That's why I like using the home notes. I do. Yeah, we've had a successful stalk this morning. Graham's taken this doe. Um, I wasn't actually planning on taking a roe doe, but this one was limping, so it was a perfect animal to take out. He's happy, he's just off looking for a shell casing at the moment. Uh, he's a home loader, so he likes to keep those. Um, I'll just prepare this, we'll get it back to the truck and uh, back to the larder for a cup of coffee. I do this um, <clears throat> all in the field. A lot of people will go back to the larder and do it, but uh, I like to get rid of the stuff. I can let the foxes and everything get at it. Uh, rather than me make a mess at the back at base.
what I wanted to show people was a little bit about what I do, who I am, um, and then uh, show a few films of the different species that we shoot and the different ways in which we shoot them. Um, show you some new bits of ground perhaps you haven't seen before. Uh, so the next thing we've got coming up will be the Robux. We hope to have a video out by the end of May and just uh, show you what it's like to stalk Robux in the south of Hampshire.